Okay, I am not set up for a makeup tutorial. This is my first makeup tutorial, but um, you'll have to pardon any background noises. I don't live alone. I live with my family, so there will be noises. I'm going to show you how to do like a brown smoky eye. Um, instead of blacks and grays, we're going to use golds and browns and beiges and stuff. Um, it's my basic everyday look, and I absolutely love it. So, start with obviously a clean, no makeup, no lotion space. You want it to be your natural skin. I'm going to start with it's a shadow base or eye primer from Mally. This is the Romantic Brown. So I use it a lot. It's this creamy one here. You can use a brush or your finger. I usually use my finger. Um, so, finger. Um, apply it all the way from under your eyebrow down onto your eyelid. Um, you can use any eyeshadow primer that works best for you, but this is the only one I have right now because it's one that works really well for me. And I do make a lot of funny faces when I'm doing my makeup, so. Um, now that I start with the eyeshadow primer. I'm going to do the rest of my face also if you want any tips on just a basic face makeup. Um, you can skip this part or you can watch it. I'm going to use something I use a lot. It's clean. It says it's called clean. Um, it's from CoverGirl. It has the blue. This is the oil control. Mine is classic beige which is 530. So I'm going to take this here. It's my lawn foundation brush. I'm just going to put a little on it there. And I'm going to do it in all the spots I need it. Don't do it on your whole face because then it looks really fake. Just do it in the spots where you absolutely need it. And that would be on either side of my nose, in between my eyebrows, and my nose. And I'm also going to do a little under my eye. If you really need good dark circle or kind of like a blue purple tint you have on there, if you need good coverage for that, use like an orange or peach pressed foundation. Um, it works really well. Now, I usually use my finger. But recently I ordered a blending sponge and I heard that really really works well for foundation. So I'm gonna try that out from now on. So you just want to blend it out so it looks even with the rest of your face. Do a little more here. foundations off my brush and just use it again. Um, I'm going to apply another Cover Girl product. It's a pressed powder. It's in the green. It's for sensitive skin. My skin is pretty sensitive. It does come with this little puff, but I've used it so much I probably should throw it away. So I'm going to use a brush, just any powder brush about this size. Since it's for all over your face, you could use a fan brush if you wanted to. And this is a nice, light, even powder. Um, it doesn't look like you're wearing any powder at all. You know, sometimes you get it all caked up. and um, This stuff, it doesn't cake up very easily. You have to put on a lot of any powder, you know, for it to cake up. And this is just kind of for um, an anti-shine and it kind of completes the foundation look. So now I have applied that over my whole face. I can put that away. 
And I'm gonna get out my sheer cover finishing powder. This is medium, and it's just a loose powder. Um, I use it because it's like a tiny bit darker than my skin tone. It's hard to tell on camera, but it is. And I'm just gonna apply it under my cheekbones as a base um, for my contouring powder, which is just like a bronzer. It's a couple shades darker than your skin. It should be anyway. And then I'm gonna put it on my nose. And just forehead, because I have a lot of problems with that. Now I'm done with that. Then I'm going to take my Maybelline New York Mineral Powder. Um, this is Nude Light 4. It's not light, to be honest. It's kind of like, it's what I wear in the summer when I'm tanner. It's kind of more of a dark. This is a couple shades darker than my winter skin, so I use this as my bronzer for my cheeks. I'm just going to put it just underneath, maybe onto the apples of your cheeks a little bit. Kind of work it in to the side of your face and down your jawline. So from temple to jawline, just kind of a nice line and then under the apples of your cheeks. And this is going to create some nice definition and you'll have really nice cheekbones. I'm going to put it under my jawline to kind of thin out my face. So, now that I've done that, I'm going to put that away and get out my blush. This is um, Mark Wins International. It's got some blush. I'm just applying the smallest amount of blush because I don't need much because I kind of already have a red complexion. Not red, pink. So I'm just going to apply it on the apples of my cheek. Just a little bit. Make sure you always tap it. And I like to use a nice peach, not so much the rosy, a nice peach because it's more subtle. And I'm going to do the tiniest bit on my nose. Um, if you really want to find out where you should put blush, tip your head upside down for about 15 seconds and look up. And the parts of your face where it's like red and you notice a difference in color, that's where you should put it. Um, I've always gone by that guideline. I memorized where I need to put it and it works great. I have this sponge, this blending sponge. It's not the beauty blender, it's just a flat, flat sponge that I use to blend everything together on my cheeks and nose. Uh, and you do need to wash this like every seven to ten uses to keep it clean. Just some warm soap and water will be fine. Now I'm done with my face, so I'm gonna continue on with my eyes. It's my eyes. Um, also, I'm gonna go back with the Mali, and the Mali has a really nice whipped cream. It's called right? Is it whipped cream? Yes, it is. It's whipped cream. It's a really nice creamy color. I'm just going to put a little on my finger and put that as a highlighter underneath my eyebrow. I usually have to go in a few times for it to make a difference because it's supposed to be a really nice subtle color. Kind of like a clear shimmer. It's nice. Um, and I can close that. I'm going to get out my e.l.f. palette. I don't know if this, this palette really doesn't have a name, but it's got a lot of browns and golds. <clears throat> This is my e.l.f. palette, and I'm going to take my eyeshadow brush, which is this Color Mates brush. Anything about this size, a nice domed eyeshadow, pretty loose, um, use. I'm going to use a nice rose gold, which is this color right here. Um, I'm just going to apply a heavy amount of that on my brush and then tap it off so none of it falls and I'm just going to apply it on all of my eyelid from corner to corner I'm going to do it to both eyes try and make sure it looks as even as you can get it that's how I clean my brush off for another, another color I go it works fine I'm going to apply this dark kind of 
dark black coffee looking color. It's got a little hint of gold. I like using anything with hints of gold and shimmer because it just really works well, well with my brown eyes. And you're just going to apply this in the crease from corner to about two thirds of the way in. And you're not going to blend it yet. You're going to do that for both eyes. This is where it takes a while. You need to get it as even as you possibly can. And I don't know if it looks even on the camera or not, but it's pretty even right now. So, clean your brush before I can get a new one. I'm going to use kind of this light milk chocolate color. It's got a hint of like a, I guess it is more of a rosy chocolate. Um, and I'm going to use it as my blending color for my crease. I'm just going to apply that on top of it and blend it out like that. Now it's going to look more dramatic um, on camera than it really is or it'll look less dramatic, I don't know. But it's going to be different than what it is in real life, but it, it, you will have a really nice result. Blend, blend, blend. That is so important when you're doing a smoky eye or just a nice subtle color on your eyes. If you're doing two colors, blending is really the key. Then, I'm going to use, it's like a really light tan, like a beige. I'm just going to put a little on my brush. Um, and I'm going to apply that over in this general area. Just so it's more subtle and it looks nice. I'm going to apply some more to my other eye. It's going to start to come together once you're done with the mascara, because that's like your last step. Then it really looks like a nice nude smoky eye. Now, I'm going to take a smaller brush. Let's do this one here. It's about this size. It's a nice little line brush. It's about the same size all the way up, and it's pretty loose. As you can see, I'm going to take a nice, like, I don't know, I guess it would be another rosy gold, but in a different shade, a little, with a hint of brown. I'm going to tap that on the very end. You can't see it, but then I'm going to put it in this area to kind of follow through on the crease. It just gives a little pop of color. You don't have to do this step if you don't want. I do it just because I like being different, and not a lot of people do this that I've noticed. Maybe you do. Good for you. Um, now that I'm done with this palette for now, I'm going to go back in with my Mally. I love Mally. Use that whipped cream again and go over my, my brow bone, under my eye, my eyebrow. Just to kind of complete the highlighted look. Now, here's the fun part. I have... Shimmering Black Waterproof Eyeliner. It's by Mally. I like to use this especially on the bottoms of my eye. You only do the outer half or outer one third. Never do all the way in. Even if it's on the lash line or waterline, it'll make your eyes look smaller and more closed in and it'll be a little too dark, I think. I mean, if you do it and it works for you, okay, but for me, it makes it's just too dark. So, you can sharpen this. I got sharpener all over it and just apply it to the top here wing it out towards your temple just kind of up you can go in as far as you like but I wouldn't suggest going in more than two-thirds which is about the end of your color here you take your pinky and you don't want to put any dark colors in that area um, it will help with the more almondy look like and just bigger, more bold eyes. Now this is one of the harder things for me to do, is to get it even. I do like the pointed tip sponge liquid eyeliner. There's some noise, sorry. Um, 
it does work really well. But I ran out a couple days ago and I haven't gotten to the store because I live in Michigan. It's January and the roads are really bad. So I'll just use this for now. It works. So that's pretty close. It's about as close as I'm going to be able to get it without my liquid eyeliner. Now I'm going to take the same eyeliner. I just had to sharpen it real quick. Just to get more of a fine tip point so I can get in here better. I'm going to do just the outer like one fourth on the lash line. I try never to do the water line unless it's for like a costume or something because it just it makes it too dark. So I'm going to take the end of any other if there's like a sponge on the tip. Okay, so you take the sponge tip and you're just going to kind of blend it so it doesn't look so defined. Make sure it's not in your water line. take I have somewhere one second here it is it's by get glowing it's a cute little like flower palette I don't know what color it is but this is petal pinks um that's their little what the name of their palette is I'm going to take that small line brush again and there's kind of like a creamy white that I use in here a lot. You really can't see it because it's just in the edges. But I'm going to apply that under my, my tear duct here. This just adds a little color and makes your eyes look brighter. And I'm just going to go up a little bit with it. Just kind of surround the whole corner with that a shimmery white color. It really makes your eyes pop more. Now, you are going to put something on the waterline, but it's either going to be a white or a nude eyeliner. Um, I'm just going to use, because it's waterproof base, I'm going to use that Fun Valley again. a fun brush. It's a really short stubbly brush. I'm just going to put a little bit on the end. And I'm going to apply this um, in my waterline. Go pretty light with it, otherwise it looks really obvious. This is just, this just gives your eye a nice pop. Um, You can do it heavier in the outer corner, but get lighter as you go to the inside, like you would with any other color. A little more. You can see it's just a nice, it's a nude eyeliner. It looks just like your skin, if not a little lighter. I'm going to use this fun looking tool here. It's an eyelash curler and it just curls your eyelashes, makes them more full when you put mascara on or just without mascara. So I'm just going to put my eyelashes in between there and pinch. If you feel any pain or it's pulling too hard, you're doing it wrong, you shouldn't, it shouldn't affect you, um, it shouldn't make your eyes water. There we go. Now this is my Mali mascara. Just in black, I think, yeah. It's kind of cool. Um, it's got like... It's got like a pipe cleaner tip. I like the rubber ones, but the, this one's worked well for me. So you're just going to apply darker on the out, and you do it a little lighter as you get in here. Ooh, I do that a lot. I'll touch that up in a second. Now, it helps when you blink into it. Okay, 
Okay, that's really bugging me. I'm gonna take my sponge. It's hard because this is waterproof. Okay, I have a tissue here. There we go. Not too difficult. And continue with our mascara. Do a little bit on the bottom, but only like the outer half eyelashes. Because if you do all of them all the way in, it will make your eye look more closed in. And do your other one. Duh. Sometimes when I do my eyelashes, they touch the crease of where I put eyeshadow on. That's why I kind of like to keep the eyeshadow lighter until I'm done with mascara, because I might have to go in over it with some more, which I'm going to do. So, remember I said I'm done with my palette here for now. Um, I'm just going to take any, just any eyeshadow brush. About that size, kind of loose. Go in with the same, like, goldish dark chocolate. Ooh, I got a lot of makeup on my fingers. Um, and I'm gonna just kind of touch up just in the crease. If I can wipe makeup off, I might have to rinse it off later. But um, that's basically my whole look. You can change the colors around, but just kind of to the same like um, shades, like darker in the creases, lighter as you blend out, lighter on the lid. You can also have um, yeah, here it is, a nice. Clear sparkles you can put over your eyelid. I have it in um, Revlon Photo Ready Primer and Eyeshadow. See, it's um, number 510 Graffiti. It's got some nice colors in here. I use this a lot for my eyeshadow. Um, but this is nice. You would think it's a really intense white, but it's just a clear sparkle you could put over anything. So that's just if you want to intensify it a little bit. I usually do because it just looks nice. There we go. And that, yeah, and that just kind of completes your whole look. So you can kind of just see my basic, basic look there. Um, yeah, change up colors, um, darken it, lighten it, whatever your taste is. But that's my brown nude smoky eye. I'm um, just using natural colors. Um, subscribe, like, comment, do anything you like. And I'll hopefully be posting more with different ideas and even some hair tutorials. Bye!